Indie games have come a long way since the days of early access, and by a long way I mean the games are still in early access. These types of games are games that I like to refer to cleverly as shit games. As somebody who has a passion for games and game design, I find it insulting that game developers have opted out of developing a game in full before releasing it, and have decided instead to simply create a prototype, hype it up, oh! and then collect bags of cash to then use at their leisure, because they now have no obligation to finish their game because they just got rich off of suckers like you. This has been the cycle of indie games for about the past four or five years, and it shows no signs of breaking. But occasionally, occasionally you will find a studio that will develop a game and release it like a normal fucking studio should. And more often than not, that game tends to be better quality because it's finished. Funny how that works, huh? <laughs> Wuppo is one of those little gems. Wuppo is a game I've been waiting around six years for, and for six years I've been hyped and I retained that excitement until one day I saw that it was scheduled for release in late September of 2016. After buying it the first day, I didn't put it down, and while playing it I recorded nearly four hours of footage with the intention of making my usual comedy style video with it. The truth is, as I played, it became increasingly hard to fit in my own personal jokes and funny moments, and ultimately I realized that I'd be detracting from the game's own hilarious jokes and quirky programming. This is why I was pushed to create my first review video. There really isn't any other way to justify my feelings for the game than to praise it in this format. I'm not sure how many other games I'll review, or even if I want to review any other games, but I know that I want to review this game. Not only because of how little attention it has and I want to share it, but because it truly impressed me and I want to expose it to an audience of gamers who may find great enjoyment in the game, like I did. Wuppo follows the story of a nameless little creature called a Wum, who is cast out of his cushy house and is forced to relocate and find a new home fucking A1 story, right? The game is very basic in its mechanics. You control your character's movements with WASD. You can double jump, and you can shoot projectiles with a gum gum gun. You can also use different hats and accessories to interact with the world. The areas in the game will make you utilize your tools and platforming skill to get to areas and solve puzzles. These are usually always concluded with a clever way to get to a boss fight and to progress the story. Newest and Parasit, the studio behind Wubbo, have truly created a masterpiece unlike any game I've played since The Legend of Zelda, back when I was a kid in the 1950s. It takes a real skillful love for games to truly understand and recreate what made a video game fun, enjoyable, and intuitive in its gameplay, its story, and in its art design. Wuppo is a game that relies heavily on the fact that it doesn't have to be inherently new to be refreshing. The game at its core is dependent upon the same wonder and awe you would get exploring its universe that you would exploring Hyrule in The Legend of Zelda, for instance. You simply get lost in it. The whole game simply unearthed the nostalgic, excited feelings within me as I kept playing. Whether it be the quirky made-up names they used to describe items or things, Yo, what the fuck is a splank? Or the expansive and intricate level designs with perils and enemies and secrets that goaded me into spending more time in an area and learning about the game's lore. The puzzles that I actually had to think to solve and couldn't look up tutorials for because there fucking aren't any were challenging and rewarding. The whole game evokes the thrill of discovery and adventure I haven't had since fucking Minecraft, okay? Minecraft. The music really added to the sense of adventure, whether it be the soothing melody of the opening theme, or the frantic, thrilling boss fight music. or the spooky, eerie vibes from the temples and caves that you discover and explore. The music composed by Thomas D. Ward really sucked me into the immersion of the game. 
Accompanied with the music, the art, the scenery, the interactable objects, and enemies that you encounter and fight, and even the NPCs which almost always have something for you to do or something for you to talk about to learn about the lore, provide you with clues and hints about other areas with even more things to do there. You could even collect film strips and pop them in to reveal secrets about the world and locations where it was found. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Scarus here, and today... And speaking of areas, you got your forests, you got your kitchens, you got your elevators, you got your cities, you got your roller coasters, you wait three fucking hours to get on for a 30 second ride, you got your elevators, you got your secret temples, you got your fortune tellers, you got your caves, you got your redundancy jokes, you got your baths, you got your bridges, you got your sideways trains, and then you got your clocks. Clocks. You got your fucking clocks, guys. Clocks, guys. Fucking clocks. The best part about this game was the fact that after I finished an area, I anticipated immediately that the game was going to end, only to find out that there was a whole new area that I would get to explore. The only thing I can say that hindered my experience with this game is that as I kept playing, it became increasingly harder to enjoy, because in the back of my head I kept asking myself, shit, is this the last boss? Is this the last area? And when I was eventually right, and as soon as the credits started to roll, I had finished a game that I had waited six years for in two days. But it was the best two days I've ever spent playing a game. The best part about this game was the fact that after I finished an area, I anticipated. <coughs> <coughs>